What's up guys, this is Nate with Bleepin' Jeep. Today I'm gonna to show you how I build a tire carrier from scratch. If you liked the video or you learned something, give it a thumbs up. Let's do this. I'm excited about this one. These are the kind of projects that I live for. Um, if it was up to me, I would just fabricate bumpers, tire carriers, and skid plates and stuff like that. That's one of my favorite things to do. If you follow me on Instagram or you watched my Key and the Hammers video, you saw that I destroyed the tire carrier on this Jeep. Um, I mangled it up pretty good. I was had the whole weight of the vehicle going back on a rock over and over and over, and it just bashed this thing in just to all hell. Uh, so bad that actually I couldn't even open up the door when I got home. I had to cut it off with a sawzall. The best way to get started on a project like this is to start with your mounting location. Um, so I already have the mounts built. I'm just going to reuse the mounts. I'm not going to show you how I built the mounts in this video. Uh, but this is basically just angle iron with a tab that I made um, in the shop. I didn't even use a plasma cutter. I just use a grinder. Sometimes I prefer to just use a grinder anyway. So basically what I did is I decided what size bushing I was going to fit to the back of the Jeep and then I cut this to match, welded it up, drilled some holes in it, mounted it to the Jeep in the locations that I thought would work the best. We're going to use some basic construction tools in order to build this thing. Uh, basic meaning just chalk lines and whatnot. So in the front of the shop I'm going to mark a few centers that are going to represent our four different mounting locations and then I'm going to take a chalk line, I'm going to snap some lines between them all and then I can uh, cut some scrap material I have laying around the shop in order to fabricate a jig, weld it all together with our sleeves, and then we have a good recipe for a solid mounting location to build our tire carrier. I always keep inch and three quarter tube 180 wall on hand. So I've got 40 feet of this sitting in the shop. I don't think I'm gonna have to go buy any material for this project. I should have enough stuff laying around. Um, I'm gonna get started by cleaning up the mounts for our bushings. Now we need to lock these sleeves in place and make sure that they don't move throughout our fabrication process. So each one goes on one of these center marks. One up there, one up there. And what we need to do is, I've got some of this scrap steel down here and we're gonna tack weld it into the, some different places in order to make sure that these don't move on us. So I've got a little bit longer than I need there. A little bit longer than I need there. And so on and so forth. We put in this uh, angle on the bottom, and then because this is gonna actually have the tire, spare tire laid on top of it, we're gonna go with a flat piece of steel up there. So I'm gonna tack these together, and then we can go from there. Now with everything tacked into place, as you can see, the sleeves for our bushings are exactly where they need to be. Nothing is shifted around, everything's straight up and down. So now we can actually get started. What I'd like to do is start with the lower bar. There's gonna be a bar going from this side to that side, really similar to how the old tire carrier was set up. I'm just going to um, decide where I wanna make my bends real quick, uh, start bending everything, I'll be doing each side equally until I can lay it almost right on top of the tire and then uh, they'll come down and intersect with these sleeves. I decided I wanted the bends to be close to about a 30 inch spread. These are a 46 inch spread, so if I have the center of each bend at around 30 inches, that should give it plenty of room to kind of taper down. Um, so I need to mark a center line. Since this is all set up on a grid that I know is measured exact, I'm gonna go from one side to the center. It's gonna be 23 inches, because that's half of 46. Then I can take 30 inches, lock it in, put 15 inches as a center point. This side of 30 inches, that side of 30 inches. Now, I can figure out where I need to put my bender how I need to set it up in order to get the center of my bend at 30 inches. This is a pre-bent section. It's about 
45 degrees. I bet I'll need a little more than a 45, but this should at least be able to get me to where um, I can see about where I can put the center of the bend. So there's a part on my bender that I have lined up at this white mark. So all I need to do is set this to where the center of the bend is really close to where I need it to be. And then I can mark that mark right there. Now I'm gonna measure the distance between here and here. I'm gonna mark it on the other side. Then I can cut, I don't know, I'll probably cut maybe a five foot section. I'll cut a five foot section of tube and then I can lay it down. I can make the marks where I need them and I can put it on the bender and get something close to what I have marked here on the floor. I kind of like the look of a spare tire poking out of the bottom of this lower bar, so I want to try to maintain that look somehow. We're definitely going to be turning this down. Um, as you can see, we need to bend these in a little bit more. So slowly but surely, I'm going to be just bending these little by little until I can get the ends to match up um, on the end of here. I cut this piece a little bit longer than I thought I would need. And uh, so I expect to trim just a little bit at the very end in order to make this cup around that sleeve. When I cut a piece at five foot, I did not realize how close that was gonna be. <laughs> it's like exactly what I need. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut a little bit off the top. I'm gonna slowly fish mouth the top to shrink the gap on the backside of the tube. And what that's probably gonna end up doing is it's gonna force me to bring this down just a little bit to bring it off the tire, maybe a little closer to something like that. Um, but I'm okay with that. see where we're heading with this tire carrier design. Very simple design. Um, I didn't want to get too crazy with this build just because I'm under a time crunch. I've got to get this done like pronto. Um, the next step that I would like to do is I'm going to finish welding the back side of this. So I'm going to pull the tire out. I'm uh, going to finish welding all the way around here. I'm going to finish welding all the way around these. Um, that way, because there's going to be a little bit of distortion and bending, as you finish weld, and I would rather have the bottom portion, all the distortion done um, before we tack these upper arms in and weld these upper arms. I just don't wanna have um, too much distortion as a unit. So this way it should help bring that down to a minimum and make it to where it's gonna fit <laughs> whenever we take it off of our jig. I'd like to fabricate our upper arms. So I've got a whole bunch of these pre-bent little jammies over here. It's gonna need to be close to this piece, but bent a little bit farther than a 45. Let's see, maybe like a, we'll try a 60. It's not completely straight. It's up at a little bit of an angle. I think what I need to do is make sure that this side and that side both come up at the exact same spot. So I'm gonna have to measure from the bottom, make a mark, measure from the bottom, make a mark, and then uh, I can start notching and getting everything to fit over the other tube. I've been fish mouthing these two upper arms. I wanted to just do some light tacks just to hold it in place. I think the next step is gonna be the actual mount that goes into the spare tire. And for that, I'd like to reuse the one that was on the old tire carrier. So I'm gonna cut this bad boy off because this is all completely undamaged from the shenanigans down at King of the Hammers. And then I'll lay it in there and figure out uh, some dimensions to cut this backing plate.
Now I'm going to measure to a couple of common points, make sure this is truly centered, and then I am probably gonna find some cardboard around here uh, and cut a little cardboard template so I can uh, cut a sheet on the table with the plasma cutter, get something that I can weld to this and weld to this. The next part's kind of tricky. I need to get the gun under here and tack weld a couple spots, and then I'm gonna throw some heavy tacks up here. Then we need to weld it from the tire side, which means we need to break off this little tack weld here, break, break off this little tack weld here, then I can lift the whole thing up off of the tire. I am going to weld an edge up here to make this a 90, and then I'm gonna weld it to the top of this to give it some more strength um, to keep the tire from flopping around. And then I'm going to put a gusset on the bottom between the bottom of this tire mount and uh, this back plate here, and then I'll do another 90 degree down there. That way it gives this a little bit of extra rigidity and to keep the tire from being able to bend the carrier. Like a tire carrier now. So, we need to add a little strength. Got a gusset, I'm gonna weld on the top here. I've got a gusset, I'm gonna weld onto the bottom here. And I've got this little guy. It's gonna go on the bottom right there. Then, once we're done welding all that up, I can uh, break it free from this cagey bit and we can test fit it on the Jeep. This thing is hot. I'm gonna finish letting it cool. Got everything welded up. Got the gussets welded up. Oh, got the back of this all welded up and it is hot. Uh, before I cut this brace off, I'm gonna let this cool. Um, with everything like expanding and shrinking and whatnot, I just, I'd hate to see something warp. I don't know if at this point that's a <laughs> illegitimate fear or what. It could just be bro science, but regardless, I'm gonna let this cool overnight. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna cut this off and we can toss it on the Jeep. I let this bad boy cool overnight. So now I'm ready to grind everything down smooth the way I want it, because no matter what happens, when I take this cage off, we're gonna have to live with it. So um, whether that means heating and bending something, um, whatever I gotta do to make it work. I think we're gonna be okay, but time will tell. So I'm gonna grind this down I'm gonna cut this frame off, and then we can see how it fits on the Jeep. Check that out, tire carrier fits just fine. You know, having that frame set up throughout the entire process definitely helps keep things where they need to be. Uh, so yeah, it all, you know, you saw the whole process. We just marked it out on the floor where we wanted it, and then it ended up being the exact same dimensions that we needed at the end. I like to have a nice finished plate with some dimple die action to go over this to just kind of spice it up a little bit. So that is gonna be our next step. I wanna start to work on this cover plate, get it set up to where um, I can bolt it to this. We're gonna need to weld like a, a ridge or something along the bottom so we can bolt to the bottom as well. Ah, perfect. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know I'm a big fan of aluminum. So I've got a whole bunch of different shapes and sizes of sheet metal that I just get at the uh, scrap area of my local um, metal yard. And I just have a whole bunch of random sections like this that are remnants, so they only charge me by the pound for it. So this was dirt cheap. The reason I like aluminum is case in point right here. This is a case where aluminum can be really strong. When you make it thick enough, it can be really strong. This. This is some really big, ugly gouges, but no rust, it's great. <laughs> and this whole corner is super lightweight because it's not made out of steel. So aluminum, aluminum. I really wanted to make the tire carrier out of aluminum. And you, I guarantee you will see in a future video me making another one of these, but out of aluminum. Uh, the problem is I don't have the skills yet. 
I can weld really well with a spool gun. I recently acquired a machine that can TIG weld aluminum, and as my skills increase, you will start to see me build more stuff like this out of aluminum because the an aluminum tire carrier made out of the exact same thickness of material and everything else would easily hold this tire where it needs to be. And to be able to have a third of the weight of what this weighs right now is very uh, enticing to me. Before we get to build the cover plate, I need to make a rim that we're gonna be able to bolt to around the edge of where the cover plate's gonna mount. So I want the cover plate to end here and I want it to end right about here. Um, the reason being, I clamp a license plate to the bottom of this. Um, you've probably seen it, it's like a raisin because I constantly hit it on stuff. But uh, regardless, I'm gonna use a strip of this angle iron along the bottom. So it'll be angle iron across here. I like angle because it's more rigid than just using a flat piece of steel. And then right here, we're gonna weld a flat piece of steel. It's kind of small, all just remnants that I had at the local steel yard. So it was just dirt cheap for this stuff. And uh, so we're gonna be able to drill and tap holes all the way around for some quarter inch stainless steel hardware. Mr. Bear, this guy is turning into a full blown shop dog the older he gets. Bring that stick over here. Bring it over here, bring it over here. Don't listen that great, but okay. I have completed the bottom half of our template. Very simple. This edge right here, I'm gonna use uh, a break to give us a 90 degree to just cover the reveal of the bottom of this. Um, I got a new tool I'm excited to show you guys. It's a uh, three-in-one tool, it's a shear, it's a brake, and it's a roller, which we won't use the, bro the roller, but we'll use the shear and the brake for this project, um, which will be kind of cool. So I'm gonna use the shear to shear the straight lines. Um, I'm gonna use the brake to brake along this bottom here, and then to cut around this corner, I'm just gonna use my uh, bandsaw because um, I've used the bandsaw with aluminum lots before, and it works great. Try out the shear function first. Ha -ha. Look at that perfect edge. Beautiful. I like it. That shear works. Awesome. You know, I bought this machine for this exact kind of thing. I have a lot of projects coming up where I'm gonna be using thin gauge material and I just wanted to speed up the process. Um, I have one of the other Harbor Freight brakes up here and it's, it's like the $30 version <laughs> and it takes a lot of time and um, you have to use a crap load of like clamps and stuff to clamp this top plate on there and it just takes a long time. And it's also, if you don't use enough clamps, you, get, you can get a weird edge and everything else. Um, so I got this to speed up that process. The shear <laughs> works great. So the next step we're gonna do here, I'm gonna use my port or I'm gonna use my bandsaw. I'm gonna cut around here. And once I get done making these cuts, we're gonna use the brake and see how well that works. Let's test out this brake. That a lot. Perfect. So now I wanna add a little flair to this thing. This is plain. I mean, it, don't get me wrong, it doesn't look bad or anything, but throwing a few dimple dies down here, I think will completely change the look and uh, maybe give it a little bit more of an off-road look. I'm, right now I'm thinking four. I'm gonna take, I've got a two inch dimple die. I'm gonna put the two inch die on here, kind of measure it out. If I can fit four linear, um, I think I'm gonna do that. Um, the last one I had them staggered, I thought that looked good. I'm just gonna try doing a linear on this one. I 
think we're gonna do a six inch spread between each hole. That's way better. Just an hour of work, an hour extra of work. And look how much better that looks just by having a little cover plate. Definitely worth the time. Next thing we need to get to, I need to drill some holes. I wanna drill some holes throughout here, drill some holes throughout here, so I need to lay out a grid so I can drill some holes to um, use some quarter inch stainless steel hardware. So all this is gonna get painted and I like the look of stainless hardware on a painted surface. Just something that I really like the look of. You'll notice, if, if you ever see my Jeep in person, every bolt that's seen has been replaced by stainless all over the body, everything. Because I just prefer that look. So this is gonna be the same way. Um, I think I'm gonna do uh, black here, and I'm probably gonna do the tan. I have one can of tan left, so hopefully the tan will cover this thick enough. Um, one of the cool things about aluminum is it doesn't rust, so I can cover it enough. And then at least I know it won't corrode underneath by not having a thick enough layer of paint. We're at a point in this project where we are ready for paint. So I'm gonna do that. It's gonna take a couple days for me, but it'll be instantly for you. Finished product time, let's take a look. I don't hate it. I think it's all right. It holds a tire. This is our goal. It's nice and tight to the body. We have our clearances here. I would say if I had to measure this, it's about one piece of plywood's width away. Back here is about a two by six width away. Beautiful. The old one stuck out a little bit too far and hung up or hung down a little bit too far. So look behind my high miles license plate. You'll see the tire now hangs below this bar, which is what I was going for. Anyway, now gotta remend that. Put a little American flag, you know, just a little bit of flair. If you're wondering what the color is, um, Rust-Oleum Bedliner Black, Rust-Oleum Bedliner Tan, and uh, a week at Easter Jeep Safari. That's where all this red dirt kind of all over the place came from. So she's done, she works, I'm pretty happy. If you learned anything in this video and you would like to help support our channel, then please consider supporting us on Patreon. If you also, if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, subscribe to our channel. If you want to follow me on social media and get a uh, heads up on all these different projects that I work on, make sure you follow me on Instagram at bleepin' Jeep Nate. We'll see you next time.